you can join us whether you're at home or on holiday thank you for joining us this morning we hope you're blessed by today's service if this is your first time here please do comment say hi so we can give you a proper welcome i'm going to read from psalm 33 verses 1 to 5 sing joyfully to the lord you righteous it is fitting for the upright to praise him praise the lord at the harp make music to him on the ten stringed lyre Sing to him a new song, play skillfully and shout for joy. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. 
The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. Amen. What wonderful words about our Father in heaven. Let's sing together and worship with God. Strength for righteousness and
The number seven is a big deal in the Bible. Yeah, in biblical Hebrew, the word seven is connected to the idea of fullness or completeness. And that's something we all long for, but don't often experience. Instead, we find ourselves working endlessly, fighting back chaos with no real rest. Yes. Now keep all that in mind as we turn to Genesis 1 in the Bible. It begins with darkness and disorder, but then God speaks to bring about light and order so that life can flourish. And this happens over the course of six days. Each day is marked with the phrase, there was evening and there was morning. But on the seventh day, something special happens. God stops and rests. Right. Creation is brought to its completion on the seventh day. And that phrase, there was evening and there was morning, it doesn't appear on day seven. It's like a day with no end. On the seventh day, God's presence fills his creation. The land provides for all of God's creatures, including humans, who are appointed to rule the world with God forever. Kings and queens of the seventh day rest. I can get into that. But the humans are deceived by a dark power and they forfeit that rest. They're exiled into the wilderness where they have to work as slaves to the land. Until they die and return to the dust from which they came. 
But God wants to restore humanity back to that seventh day rest. So he chooses to give the family of Israel that experience of ultimate rest so they can share it with others. But how? They're in Egypt, slaves to an oppressive empire who's grinding them into the dust. So God confronts Egypt and he liberates the Israelites, taking them through the darkness and chaos on the way to the promised land. Now, while they're on their way, they find themselves in the wilderness. It's easy to get lost. Life is a struggle. They're not in the land of rest yet. But while they're on the way, God invites them in the wilderness to start living as if they're in the promised land. But how do you practice the future rest in the wilderness? Well, God tells them that every seventh day they are to stop their work, or in Hebrew, to Shabbat, so that they can rest and enjoy God's good world. So take a whole day to live as if the ultimate rest has already come. Yeah, this is the Sabbath, celebrated every week on the seventh day. But there's more. The Sabbath is just one of seven festivals that Israel practiced every year, each one anticipating that seventh day rest. That is a lot of sevens. And there's even more. Every seven years, the Israelites were to liberate slaves, forgive debts, and let the land rest for a whole year. And then every seven times seven years was the ultimate seventh day rest called the year of Jubilee. If anyone had lost their land or gone into debt, all was forgiven, everything restored. Wow, so the Sabbath, these feasts, the year of Jubilee, it's all pointing towards the hope of future rest. Right. Now, when the Israelites went into the land, they forgot their God, and so they forfeited their chance for rest in the promised land. They're exiled and enslaved again by an oppressive nation, led back into a world of chaos and disorder. But Israel's prophets said that their exile would end one day and that the ultimate jubilee of freedom and rest would come, but generations go by and they're still waiting. It's at this dark point in the story that Jesus appears and he launches his public mission on a Sabbath day. Yeah, he read aloud from the scroll of Isaiah saying that it was time for all captives and slaves to be released because this was the year of the Lord's favor. What did he mean, this is the year of the Lord's favor? He was talking about the ultimate jubilee. Also, oh, Jesus is claiming that seventh day rest would come through him. Right, he said that he was the Lord of the Sabbath and he confronted disorder and darkness in all of its forms, liberating people from sickness, sin, even from death itself. Yet, Jesus was killed, so even his work was undone. Well, it seemed that way. But notice, Jesus timed his death to take place at the end of the week. His body rested in a tomb during the Sabbath and on the eighth day, he rose from the dead. Oh wait, the eighth day? You mean the first day of a new week? Exactly. Jesus' resurrection was like the first day of a new creation, where God's light and life broke into the darkness. So because of the resurrection, we have hope in God's promise of future rest. But we're not there yet. It's like we're still in the wilderness, where we experience struggle and pain. But as we journey towards that ultimate seventh day, Jesus invites us to experience a taste of real rest now by following him, or in his words, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. I dare you to concentrate on God and give him the best worship you have. Once you have spoken, twice I have heard, the power belongs to our God. Once you have spoken, once you have spoken, twice I have heard, the power belongs to our God. My soul waits, my soul waits, patiently Lord, patiently Lord. Silently seeking your face, you're my rock, my refuge, my strength, salvation belongs to our God. Once you have spoken, once you have spoken, twice I have heard, the power belongs to our God. One thing God has spoken, two things we have heard. My 
soul waits patiently, O oh God, silently seeking your faith. You're my rock, no other strength but you. Salvation belongs to our God. Once you have spoken, once you have spoken, twice I have heard the power belongs to our God. Once you have spoken, once you have spoken, twice I have heard the power belongs to our God. My soul waits, patient the Lord, silently seeking your face. I need you, oh I need you, my refuge, my strength, salvation. Sing it again, once you have spoken, once you have spoken, twice I have heard, the power belongs to you. Come on, lift every voice in this place. Once you have spoken, twice I have heard, the power belongs to you. My soul waits. I need you, oh I need you You're my rock My refuge, my strength Salvation belongs to our God Once you have spoken, twice I have heard The power belongs to our God Once you have spoken, twice I have heard A statement of confidence in our God Well, my soul My strength, salvation belongs to you. One more time, once you have spoken, once you have spoken, come on, lift every voice. The power belongs to our God. If you believe that, sing with us. Yeah, the power belongs to our God. My soul, wait, patient below, silently seeking your faith. My refuge, my strength, salvation belongs to you. My soul waits, my soul waits. Patiently, Lord, silently seeking you. He is my rock, my refuge, my shield, my buckle. Salvation. One more time. My soul waits. The only confidence we have. The only confidence we have. Salvation My shield, my buckler, the glory and the lifter up of my hand. Bless his name. Bless his name. And so we see that Elijah rested, he was recharged. And then he was able to go forward in the strength and with a new vision of what God wanted him to do. And so that brings me to the to the third point today, to go forward. Now, to go forward means to advance, to make progress, to increase, to grow, to develop. Paul said to press on. With God, we should be moving forward in every area of our lives. Now, maybe not all at the same time, right? But God wants us to make progress. He wants to increase us and he wants to enlarge our borders and he wants to take us forward. You know, in God is life. And in life, there is growth. And as soon as growth stops happening, decay starts to occur. God is not a God of decay. God wants you to progress and to grow and to move forward in your life, in your home, in your workplace, in your school, in your studies, in your church, in your spiritual life, in your service to him and for him. God wants you to grow and to move forward. And God gives us that power that we need to keep moving forward. 
Now you won't find it in a can of Red Bull. It will not give you wings, but God will give you the strength that you need to go forward. It's the power that we receive by his Holy Spirit that enables us to make progress even in difficult times, to walk by faith and to keep moving even when there doesn't seem to be a clear way forward. That's faith. And that's the strength that God gives us. What God has for you is not self-manageable. God has big plans for you, bigger than you can ever ask or imagine. And I'm going to read to you from Psalm 18. Verse 32, it says, It is God who arms me with strength and makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to stand on the heights. He trains my hands for battle. You give me your shield of victory and your right hand sustains me. You stoop down to make me great. You broaden the path beneath me so that my ankles do not turn over. Isn't that an amazing word? It is God who arms me with strength and makes my way perfect. Now, if you look at even the history of Temple of Praise. You can see how God's plans for us are much bigger than we could ever, ever ask or imagine. I imagine that 40 years ago, when, when uh, pastors Tani and Madupe uh, were praying and God told them to go to Liverpool and to begin to walk the streets and tell people his good news. That if he'd have sat them down at that time and said to them, you're going to have a church, but only when you've finished building it. Oh, and I want you to build a community centre as well that will serve the people in the place which I'm about to take you to. And then I want a memorial service to commemorate the abolishment of slavery. Yes, but not in church. I want it on a Royal Navy ship. A concert? Yes, a concert would be great. But take up a whole street in the centre, in the city centre of Liverpool and praise my name there. Start a school. And while you're at it, here's a park to look after and to serve the community in which that park is placed. Did I mention that I want you to expand the school? Now, can you imagine if God had shared all of that with Pastors Tani and Modupe 40 years ago? I bet their knees would have been knocking. <laughs> but you can see that from that one instruction that God gave them to go to Liverpool and to share the word of God, that, that he's led them forward and strengthened them and recharged them and refreshed them numerous times so that they, the, the vision and the plan, that huge plan that he had for, for them, and not just for them, for us, because it's our inheritance as, as a family of Temple of Praise, and it's also for the communities in which we are based. All of that, God's plan and goodness, not self-manageable, but achievable when we rest and recharge and go forward with God. And that's my encouragement to you today. Take time to rest from the busyness of life. Spend time with God. Spend time with your family, spend time hearing from God 
and being refreshed and recharged for the journey that God has planned for your life. It's going to be amazing. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Helen, for that word. I hope you've been really blessed by today's service. If you have any questions or would like to get in touch, then we would love to hear from you. Please do contact us, message below or contact us at the email on the screen. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for this message that you want us to rest and recharge and not just rest and recharge, but rest in you. I pray, Father God, that during this week and these holidays that you will teach us something new about how to do that, Father. I pray for those who are home, Lord Jesus, who have specific needs and are crying out to you, Lord God, for something, for something special. I pray that you'll meet them where they're at, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for, for meeting with us today. We pray that you continue to meet with us throughout this week. In your name and by your spirit, we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you have a blessed week and we hope to see you again next week. Let's say the grace. Dwell in the house of the